hopefully today is the day that we first initially start the truck. <laughs> After dealing with this thing for quite a bit, going back and forth, I uh, I do need a new fuel pump. So I just called O'Reilly's; they have one. Uh, so I'm gonna go pick that up. It's about 50, I think they said 56 dollars or something like that. So we'll be replacing that. But I will be I will be making a separate video as to how to replace the fuel pump. There we go. We got a new fuel pump in there. So like I had mentioned previously, I will be making a separate video on how to install it. That way this video isn't too long. I honestly can't believe that it's running. Not so much that it's like hard to get it running, it's just, it was super last minute that I was going to get get it running. I wasn't planning on getting it running till like the end of the month, uh, just because I wanted to take my time and do some stuff. But then, if you, most of you guys know, I'm in the process right now of doing a wire tuck. So I'm halfway through it, and I was like, you know what? Before I wrap everything up, let's make sure that this thing actually cranks over. And I started thinking about it, and I was like, well, if it cranks over, and we have all the spark plugs, we have everything, why don't I just try to start it? But I was like, ah, eh, well, we'll see. I don't have the carb... I don't have a carb on it yet. So yesterday, just real quick, I threw the carb on and then I had to buy some fuel line since I didn't have any long enough. Since I deleted the factory one that runs to down here and then comes into one. I made my own, obviously it's too long. Um, anyways, so yeah, I just cranked it over and it started first try, which I'm kind of surprised, but I'm also kind of not that surprised. What I'm surprised about is that I got the ignition timing on point. Now, obviously I need to adjust it with a timing light to get it right. But the fact that it started up like that and just idled is honestly like super surprising. Now though, now I'm itching to drive it. So to drive it, I obviously need to throw the radiator in. I need to get some coolant for that. And then I also need to bleed the brakes and I need to bleed the clutch and install the slave since I had done the custom hard lines. But I'm pretty sure that I can do all that within like an hour, maybe two. So we might just be driving this thing for the first time today. Got the new clutch sleeve right here, which goes down there. So I'm gonna quickly throw this one on. So I just quickly threw in the radiator. You can see it's zip tied, uh, cause I still have to get the position right. And I do want to eventually get a new radiator. This is a stock one I would like to upgrade. Not that there's a reason to upgrade, but um, it's just one of those things for peace of mind. I do want to be driving this truck like hours at a time. Um, like, for example, we'll go on road trips and stuff, so drive it four, five, six hours straight nonstop. And I know if I had an aluminum radiator here, a nice, like, dual pass or something a little thicker and better, I know I would feel a little bit more comfortable driving it, knowing if the motor is cool. 
Plus, you could pick some aluminum ones up for other vehicles, not necessarily for a 720, but for other vehicles like a 240 or a hard body for fairly cheap. And it's all kind of the same. It doesn't have to be exactly right here. It could be uh, the inlet could be over here and vice versa since it's just rubber lines that move around. Uh, but like I said, I do have everything kind of just thrown together. So uh, obviously zip tied right now. I'm just using the hose to put some water in. I know it's not good at all because it'll rust um, but I just want to put some water in get it to heat up and then see if it leaks anywhere in case it does leak it just leaks water and it's not coolant that makes a mess and gets everywhere so that's why I'm doing water as soon as I know that it doesn't leak and I could drive around the block maybe let it run for about 10 minutes straight without overheating and that's good then I can drain all the water out and throw some actual coolant in there with some uh, distilled water but for now, the hose will do just fine. And it works out because this line down here, I forgot to tighten and I started putting water and it started dripping out. And if that was coolant, that would have made a huge mess um, just dripping out like that. I can't imagine with it having pressure built up from heat getting all over the chromed and polished stuff, which would not be any good. So the water has already dried, so that's good. And we're good to go. truck is now mostly put back together so I did adjust the valves which I will post a separate video once again showing how to do all that uh, but I did adjust the valve so now the motor is a lot quieter than it used to be now next thing I need to do now is fix the exhaust since my headers are still on pack order and I haven't gotten them uh, I'm running the factory exhaust, but it's rusted towards the bottom behind the cat, so it's sitting on the frame, so I have to go buy materials to make an exhaust. That way I can get it to go either to the back of the truck or to the side of the truck because it, it is extremely obnoxious and how loud it is because it's it's just a drone. is extremely bad. I don't know if it's because it has a shell or because it dumps right under the bed, but regardless, those two together probably don't help. It's not enjoyable to drive with it exhaust being like that and super droning. Not that it's loud, it just drones. Like you feel it like a humming sound right in the back of your head. Uh, but we'll get that all squared away and figured out. I also did get the front end kind of put back together. The hood is now on. It's a little dented. Still got to fix that. Got the fenders on. Got the headlights. Now we got to do pretty much the whole front end and then just drive it, I guess. That's, that's all we got to do now. She's ready to go. And uh, hopefully in the next video, we are cruising this truck with a bunch of other mini trucks. We'll see. We just got to find a meet to go to. But uh, yeah, I'm extremely happy that the truck is finally running and driving. It's a huge, you know, weight lift. The fact that I can just hop in the truck and move it if I need to, uh, park it down the street, do whatever I got to do versus having it just be sitting here in the middle of the driveway, not running. So I'm sure you guys know what that what that's like. I've been collecting a bunch of parts these past few weeks, um, so I think I have pretty much everything that I need for this truck to be done. I have the paint, I have the wheels that are currently getting polished, I have the tires. Actually, I do need the adapters, so I will get the adapters when I get the wheels back. Um, I have seats, I have a bunch of interior pieces. I'm going to be redoing the whole entire interior, so if anyone is interested in seeing that out, I would definitely recommend checking it out. I do want it to be you know, super comfortable and super nice and not things rattling everywhere like most of these trucks are so uh yeah 
if, if you guys are interested in any of that, I will have videos on that in the future. So with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, maybe found it useful. But if you guys have any questions on the build or any other cars on the fleet, then you guys can definitely comment down in the comment section below or you can DM me on Instagram, which is where I'm mostly active. I am super stoked on the progress that we have been making on this truck in the past couple of videos. So I hope you guys are as well. And with all that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, guys.